Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of G.I. Joe Mission Critical. This is a one to five player cooperative game where we're playing as G.I. Joes trying to take down Cobra. It is very similar and it can actually be combined with Heroes of the Grid, the Power Rangers game. I actually played that, sold it a long time ago, but from what I understand and from reading the rules, I see that they have definitely fixed a few things that I am super excited for this one. I've done one practice play, got annihilated, but had a lot of fun. So I'm excited to show this to you. Now, as always, don't forget to turn on those Klingon subtitles. If I make any errors and I miss them in editing and someone tells me in a comment, I will put them in Klingon subtitles so you will see them as we're playing. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's be those G.I. Joes and take down Cobra. The first part of setup is choosing which Joes we're going to play with. I'm going to play with three Joes, so that means we will have four action markers instead of only two if you're playing with the full set of five. We also all start with one energy and we have a deck of 10 cards. We can draw up to five cards. I've decided to do that for each of my characters. They have five cards in hand. We're going to play with Duke, Cover Girl, and Bomb Strike. Bomb Strike is from the expansion. I do have everything for this game right now. And based on how much I'm enjoying this, I'm probably gonna continue to collect this one. Each Joe has a unique ability. Duke's ability is First Sergeant. Once per battle, a hero of your choice may reroll any number of dice during an attack. He is super helpful assisting other people. Yeah, I love it. Cover Girl over here, her ability is Tank Driver. Once per battle, use a vehicle for minus one cost. And I'll show you the vehicle shortly. And that minus one cost has come into play many times. And then Bomb Strike, this is forward air control. I decided to use two characters that do stuff with vehicles. I thought maybe uh, they will work well together. I actually don't know. I haven't tried these two. Forward air control. Once per battle, after a vehicle without the passive keyword is used, you may return it to the power board instead of discarding it, so potentially we can use it more than once. So all three of our characters will have a total of four actions, one energy, ten cards for their deck. They've each drawn five. Duke has all out attack, charge, roll out, another charge, and another roll out. Cover Girl has tank, beautiful driving, armored advance, explosive payload, and yo Joe. Finally, Bomb Strike has remote control, uh, way ahead of you, the UAV reconnaissance, way ahead of you, and locked on. You might be wondering why I said you may draw up to five cards. You don't have to. And the reason for that is because if ever your deck is empty during a battle, you're considered defeated. You immediately re are removed from battle. You go to the center board here, the pit, and you spend one energy. And if there's no energy there left, then we lose the game. That's one of the ways we lose. So although your deck are your actions, it's also your health. So you've got to be careful. But at the beginning, we need all the cards we can get. <laughs> so I did five for each three. Uh, we have placed each of our miniatures in the center here in the pit. I've also placed out the four locations. Now there is an easy side or normal side, and then there's the advanced side. Yeah. Uh, considering I did not win last time, we'll use the normal side. I set these up randomly, and then I placed out these location tokens, and these are new from uh, the Power Rangers game. This allows you to use a basic set of cards for de deployment, and that way you can put these in any locations. You can use them in Power, uh, Power Rangers games, and you know that that symbol means that location. Next, we'll set up our power board nice and simple. We have all of our vehicles, including including the ones from the expansion, all shuffled up. You reveal three out on the board. As we defeat foot soldiers, we're going to place them on here. And then not even as an action for free. Anytime during a battle, we can spend those foot soldiers to use one of these vehicles, depending upon the cost up here. We have the AWE Striker, the Mobat, and the Killer Whale. This costs six, and this is a passive. So it says, until the end of this battle, reduce the energy cost of all cards by one to a minimum of zero. That could be super powerful, especially when we're going against any of the big bosses. There are two type of minions in the game, Crimson Guard and Cobra Troopers. We have two tokens to determine the differences for them, and you can choose which one for which. I'm going to do this one for the Crimson Guard and this one for the Cobra. Uh, uh, cobra troopers so anytime we see this symbol we're putting out cobra troopers troopers and this one we're doing the crimson guard 
these are going to be the cards that we're trying to defeat and whenever we defeat them we can remove those foot soldiers from the board uh, and you'll see how that works as we play next we'll set up our deployment deck how we do this is we take this deck of 20 cards break them out in four piles with five cards each once you've separated the cards into the four piles we'll take one boss i have two bosses because of the expansion so i've randomly chosen one of them and i've randomly chosen two different lieutenants however if i wanted a harder game i could have one of them be the nemesis but I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Let's just do this. And we're going to put one in the, they call them stacks B and C, and this stack, uh, one in stack D. And then I'm going to shuffle this one up and then shuffle this one and put it on top, shuffle this one, put it on top, and shuffle this one and put it on top of that. So we have one stack of cards. We now have our completed deployment deck. We then place all the different token types, so energy, damage, panic tokens, all of the minis. Whoa, I just threw that crimson <laughs> that crimson uh, uh, guard around. We also have our Cobra Troopers, and we have our potential lieutenants all over here on the left-hand side. And those will come into play as we play. We also have our battle board, which we will use when we go into combat. In order for the Joes to win the game, we need to defeat the boss and survive the battle. If we can do that, the Joes win. If a hero is defeated when there are no more energy tokens at the command center, then we lose. Here we have the round structure of the game. Our deployment phase will resolve the five en uh, enemy deployment cards. Yes, five. It's brutal. You'll see how that works. Then we have our action phase. The actions that we can take are right here. There's only three of them. We can move move from your current location to any other location so consider all locations adjacent you can jump around uh, and if you go to the command center or the pit uh, you can power up you can choose to initiate a battle now only one person has to spend an action to initiate a battle and any joes in that space will automatically go into the battle so part of the strategy is who's going to spend that action and who's not and whatnot kind of cool you can also spend an action to recover choose cards from your discard pile with a total value of six shields and at the bottom you can see that there's a shield value there so you can choose cards in your discard pile up to six shuffle them uh, back into your deck and you can refill your personal energy storage which is one you can never hold more than one energy so even if at the end of a battle there's extra energy out in the pool we each can only take one back with us with that, I believe we're ready to start our playthrough. So let's go ahead by starting with the deployment phase. We need to deploy five of these cards. How this works is we take the top card of this deck and we'll reveal it. We can see three of these. That means three Cobra Troopers are going to show up on the board. Where do we place them? Well, we look at the card behind it, and that's going to tell us where. That will be in the Space Station Delta, because that's where the location token, you can see it a little out of focus right there. We're going to place them there. Our next ones, then, we can flip over. We've got two more Cobra troop Troopers over in the Cobra Temple. Each location has a maximum amount of enemy figures that can be placed in those locations. So if ever there are six enemies here, that location becomes panicked. If ever a location becomes panicked and we're supposed to place more enemies there, we'll actually place it in the next location clockwise. And if ever all four locations are panicked, then we discard all the energy from the center, the pit, and then if any character dies, the game is done. We've completed two deployments. Let's do the next one. We will have, oh my gosh, it's all uh, Cobra Troopers. Two more in, let's see, that's in New York City. We'll place those right here. Next, we have uh, in the research lab, oh, finally, two a Crimson Guard, just something different. And then our final one back in, the, in New York City, one more Cobra Trooper. We've now spawned all the enemies on the board. As we can see, the Space Station Delta is one away from becoming panicked, so that's probably going to be an important place that we go to to try and deal with them. Uh, conversely, in the jungle, no one wants to be in the jungle, apparently. <laughs> now what I'm going to do with these five cards is I'm going to shuffle them up and place them at the bottom of the deployment deck. To start off our action phase, we're all going to use one action and move ourselves to the space station Delta. Then we're going to have Cover Girl spend the second action so we can go into combat. Whenever there are more than four enemies in a space, you have to choose which four you're going to fight. We can only fight four at a time. So I think I'm going to do one Crimson Guard and three Cobra Troopers. That means from these decks, I'm going to draw three of the Cobra Troopers and one of the Crimson Guard. And then I can choose which order I want to reveal them. 
Whenever the Joes initiate combat, they can decide if they want to draw any cards up to a maximum of five. Right now we all have five cards, so we can't draw. The other thing we get to do is take all of our energy and put it in a shared pool. So now we have three energy in a shared pool, and we get two energy every time we initiate combat. So we have a total of five energy that we can use to pay the cost for our cards. As you can see, this card has a cost of one energy. We have our four foot soldier cards. Let's start with the Crimson Guard card. Oh, it's fast. Well, it will, whenever a card that says fast, it's going to go as far left as it can unless there's already a fast card. This will also mean that they will activate first instead of us. Uh, then we have another fast card. Well, we'll just leave it there. Another fast card and just a regular card for them. Each card has a few different items we need to look at. The first one is the health of the card itself. When we're dealing damage to the foot soldiers, we're actually dealing damage to the cards. If I dealt three damage to this card, I'd flip the card over. We have dealt three damage and defeated one of, I think this is the Crimson Guard. Yes, this one is the Crimson Guard. We would then put that Crimson Guard on our track that we can then use to activate some of our vehicles. The other fun part, though, is these cards are how the foot soldiers are going to activate. Now, normally, heroes get to go first, but <laughs> we were ambushed. Because we were ambushed, they are going to activate first. They're going to activate the ambush card. So we're going to exhaust the card. They tell you to turn it 90 degrees sideways. I just use exhaust, exhaustion tokens because they don't fit very well on here. <laughs> uh, this says fast. That's why we know we're doing this first. It says deal two damage and drain one energy. So draining one energy, we're going to take one of the energy that we have in our pool and discard it. If we had no energy in the pool, we'd have to choose one character and uh, they would lose a card or cards for each drain that we have. And of course, we can't pay them in energy. So now we have to choose which character is going to suffer the two damage. And I think I'm going to choose Cover Girl for this. Whenever the Joes take damage, they can decide who is going to take the damage unless the card specifies something like the one with the most cards in hand or something like that. How you resolve damage, you're going to take your deck and you're going to reveal the top card of the deck. And you're going to look over here. Oh, that's three shields. Because that has more shields than the amount of damage that we took, we just get to take this card and slide it to the bottom of the deck. If that had had two shields on it, we'd simply discard it, but that's like taking damage because remember, if our deck is empty, we're considered defeated. If it had only had one shield, then we would discard it and then have to reveal another card, but then we're only looking at one damage instead of two because one of it would have been blocked from that card. Now that the enemy has activated, it is the Joe's turn, and we're going to choose one character. They can play one card, and we're going to go back and forth until they have activated all four of their cards, and then we get one final turn to try and defeat whatever's left, and then if there's any cards left here or any that have been defeated, we'll just shuffle them back into their decks, and we can see them again, and hopefully if we defeat all of them, we can remove all four, well, four out of the, what, five or six characters that are on that space. The interesting and tactical part of the game comes into play when determining which of these cards we want to attack. They've already activated this card, so although I do want to get rid of that Crimson Guard, the next card they're going to activate is this one. Let's say I can deal two damage to it and flip it over. When it's their turn to activate, that card will do nothing to us. And then the next time if we can take this one out, it'll be the same thing. So right now, we have a plan where we definitely want to take out the um, Rattler attack, and there's two of them. So we want to take out these two Rattler attacks first and then take out the Cobra Charge hoping that we can take these out before they activate. We're going to start with the Duke. He's going to play at Charge. This says Attack, and it tells us how many dice we get to roll, which is two, and we gain one energy. Since we lost that one energy, I felt like it was good to get it back. So we're back to having one, two, three, four, five total energy, but now this card will be discarded. Before we roll our dice, we have to determine which card we're attacking. We're going to attack this one. Remember, we only need two damage. The dice in this game have three different sides. One is a miss, one is double hits, and one is a single hit. So we're just rolling two, looking for two damage. We only have one. Good thing Duke has his first sergeant ability, which allows us once per battle, a hero of your choice may reroll any number of dice. Yeah, let's roll reroll that miss. We love that. That's two damage. So that means we'll remove one of the Crimson Guards in our space. We're going to place it on our track so we can now start using that to activate some of our vehicles. 
and we'll be able to flip this card face down. Sweet. And remember, that card had a zero cost, so I didn't have to spend any of my energy. And that was great. So that was our first activation. It's now back to the enemies. They're going to do absolutely nothing. This one has been defeated, and so now it's back to us. We're going to have Bomb Strike go for the Joe's turn. She's going to play a Locked On. This is going to cost us one of our five energy. Attack rolling three dice. If this attack defeats the target, place one foot soldier figure uh, from the supply onto the power board. <laughs> so we can essentially get two figures on the power board, making it more likely we can use vehicles. We're most certainly targeting the Rattler attack for this. Three dice, looking for two damage. We've got three. We cannot roll over damage unless something says that we can. So we will go ahead and flip this card over. We'll remove another Cobra Trooper from the board. And we'll place one of the Crimson Guard, because I have way more of those, onto our power board. So that means we have three on our power board right now. It's now the enemy's turn, and yet again, they can do nothing. And I think we're going to have a bit of fun with Tank Girl here. We're going to have her play Explosive Payload. This costs a total of three energy, so that means we'll only have one energy left in the pool. But we can discard one vehicle from the power board. This card deals an amount of damage equal to that vehicle's cost. You may divide this damage among any number of targets. What do you say we discard Killer Whale? <laughs> that means we can deal a total of six damage. We have two enemies on the board, each with three health, so we'll take out the Crimson Guard, and we'll take out the Cobra Charge with that attack. Oh, that was awesome! Now, something I want to mention, because we discarded that vehicle, we do not replenish the vehicle pile of three until the end of the battle. So now we only have two available to us. However, we just defeated everyone, so there's nothing we need to do. What we'll do now, we have one excess energy, and I think I'm going to give that to Duke. And then we will take these cards, shuffle them back into their stacks. We'll take a look at our power board. We have five foot soldiers here. We also have a new one of our uh, vehicles. We have the Shark Submersive Reconnaissance. Until the end of this battle, each time a hero suffers damage, they may choose one card in their hand and place it on top of their deck. Oh, so they know how much damage they're going to take. That's kind of cool. We mostly cleared out the Space Station Delta. The question is, do we want to spend an action to deal with this guy or not? I don't know yet. I do think I'm going to have Duke spend an action. So that will be his second one to move over to New York City. And I will have Cover Girl, who only has two actions left. She is going to move over here to the Cobra Temple. Then I think I'll have Bomb Strike initiate a combat just against this uh, Crimson Guard. The Crimson Guard ends up being an Elite Sentinel, has a total of three health, and it's a guard card. What guard cards do, technically this should be over here, but there's only one card, so I'm just putting it here. Uh, let's say we did have this card here, and we had a couple other cards on this side and this side. Those two cards would be guarded. We could not attack them. Now, anything that deals direct damage could still hit them, but we could not attack them without first attacking this guard card. The only catch is if this was a guard card and this was a guard card, they can't guard each other because then you can't defeat them. But they also guard uh, vertically. So if there is a lieutenant and a lieutenant has guard cards up on the top, they could potentially guard cards in the lower section as well. Kind of cool how that works, but right now, can't guard itself, so it's just a, a regular three health uh, elite sentinel. If it gets to activate, all of the heroes in, or half of the heroes in this battle, round it up, discard the top card of their deck. Ouch. We do have two energy in the pool. Let's see if we can kill this thing with three health. I think we'll play it way ahead of you. Attack with two dice. If there are at least four foot soldiers on the power board, there are, there's five, then you may either gain one energy or add one die to this attack. I'm going to add the die because if I defeat him, I can only keep one energy anyways. No reason to waste energy. It would have been smart to keep Duke in our space with us because he'd give us a free reroll, but I didn't. Oh, there's three. Two and a one. That means this Crimson Guard is gone. That will be our sixth one on the power track. And we get to keep one of the power tokens or energy tokens that, were, uh, that we generated. And then we'll take this card and simply shuffle it back into the Crimson Guard's deck. Bomb Strike will use her third action then to move over here, and her fourth action, she will initiate combat with Duke. We're going to take on three Cobra Troopers. 
Bomb Strike only has three cards in her hand, so I think she's going to at least draw one. We've got the UAV Reconnaissance. Uh, that's okay, but it's actually... It's not a good attack card, so I think I am going to go to my fifth card, Targeted Airstrike. That is a great attack card. <laughs> oh my gosh, you may remove up to three foot soldiers from the power board to reduce the energy cost of this card by an equal amount. You may play this card in any battle regardless of location. So she could be anywhere else and then remove those three foot soldiers and attack anywhere. That is amazing. I've never played with her. She seems cool. Both Duke and Bomb Strike had one energy, and we'll gain two for this combat, so we have four energy to play with. We'll grab three Cobra Trooper cards. The first one is fast, that's going to happen. Second one uh, is normal, and third one is a guard, so we have to take this one out before we can attack this one. And because this is fast, it's going to activate. It says here, drain one energy, so we're going to discard one energy. We now only have three to play with. Discard one vehicle from the power board. Well, I like this shark, but it's actually probably not one of my favorites, so I'll discard the shark. That means we have the AWE striker or AW striker and the MOBAT available to us, and that's it. We'll then exhaust this because this has been activated. Duke has two of these rollout cards, so I think we're going to use one. It says, use vehicle at minus one cost this turn. And then another hero may immediately play a card. We're also going to use Bomb Strike's ability here. Once per battle, after a vehicle without a passive keyword is used, you may return it to the power board, and board instead of discarding it. We're going to use that MOBAT, so this will cost us only four of these foot soldiers, one, two, three, four, instead of five, because of the card we played. We're going to roll five dice and deal damage rolled to an enemy card of your choice. Now, the only one that we can hit is the Viper Strikes or the Rattler Attack. We're going to hit the Viper Strikes. It only has two health, but this isn't even, well, actually, it is an action because we used it with a card, but hopefully I can take this one out, and then another hero, so Bomb Strike, can play a card as well and maybe take out that cobra charge that's my plan so we'll remove these from the power board we now only have two on our power board and normally we'd have to discard this we've used it but because of bomb strikes ability we get to keep this on the board five dice to a two health card if that can't take it out i don't know what can <laughs> yeah so that viper strikes card that's the guard that's why we had to take that one out is exhausted but we can still play another card the one hard part about playing three different heroes at one time, I missed remote control. I was planning on playing this. We can play this card when a hero uses a vehicle to reduce its cost by one. So I'm going to give us one of the foot soldiers back on the power board. We'll now have three. You can play this anytime it's a reaction, so it doesn't cost an action uh, to be able to play this card. This now means we can play way ahead of you. This will give us an attack of three dice because we now have four foot soldiers and I don't need the energy. I want to just take out that Cobra charge. So I'm going for that middle card that would activate at the end of our turn here. It has three health. I'm rolling three dice. Duke is in this battle with us, so he will give us that free reroll, which we're definitely going to need. I only have one damage there. Let's reroll those. Oh, that's better. Four damage. That means this card is toast. I love it. We're going back to uh, the enemy's turn. They're just going to exhaust this card. All we need to do is two damage to the Rattler attack card. Before we take that out, Bomb Strike will use one energy. We'll go down to two to play UAV Reconnaissance. Remove one foot soldier from another location and place it onto the power board. What a cool ability. We'll take out this Cobra Trooper right here with Cover Girl so she won't have to worry about fighting this one. This means we have six foot soldiers on our board. Finally, we will activate this Cobra Trooper, already toast. So now all we need to do is enough damage to take out this Rattler attack. And I, oh, I don't want to play that one, do I? Yeah, I think I do. This kind of stinks because that gained energy is going to be wasted. We have two left over. This will give us a third, but we can only keep two. But we'll roll two dice, hoping for two damage. Duke does not have a reroll, so it's going to be what we roll. Yes, that's three. Boy, that was awesome. Another one of these guys, Toast, Cobra Trooper. That's seven on our power board. That is pretty awesome. We're then going to replenish our vehicles. So we have a new one called the Sky Striker XP14F. Choose up to four cards in Heroes Discard Piles and return them to their respective hands. That is an amazing, amazing card. That means we won't have to go into the pit to get cards back from our discard pile. We can use that vehicle to put them directly back into our hand. 
Wow, that's awesome. And we have two energy left over, so one will go to Duke and one will go to Bomb Strike. What do you think? Should we clear off the board with all Cobra Troopers and Crimson Guard? Let's do it. We only have one here. Cover Girl has one action left. She will initiate combat. She has her two energy available. She had none in her supply, and unfortunately, this is a fast card. It only has two health, but it's going to drain one of these energy, and not only that, the Awe Striker, that's the one we're going to choose, is going to get discarded. That's okay. I wasn't really planning on using it anyways. Uh, so now all I have to do is figure out how to defeat this guy with two health. I think we should be able to do that. Let's use our Tank Girl card. The only sad part is we're going to lose the one energy. I was hoping we can have one uh, prepared for us, but we won't. We'll roll three dice looking for two hits. Come on, three dice, two hits. We only got one. <gasps> Oh, that's a huge bummer. So we did not take out that final Cobra Trooper. Both CoverGirl and Bomb Strike have used all of their actions. However, Duke still has two. So for one of his two actions, he could come over here and he could attack, but I don't think that's worth it. I think instead, one of his actions, he's going to move himself into the command center. Whenever you move into the pit or command center, you immediately will take your hand, plus your discard pile and your deck, put it all together, give it a good shuffle, and you can draw up to five cards. You'll also gain one energy from the supply, not from the command center itself, because remember, those are used for if you're defeated. You have to use one of those uh, to essentially stand back up. But we gain one from the supply, unless you already have one, which of course he does, so I don't gain any of that. But this will at least have us replenished and ready to go. Uh, the other two might need to do, well, especially Bomb Strike. Bomb Strike is definitely going to need to do at least a recovery or going into the pit to be able to get her cards back because I think she has six cards in her discard pile. Duke did draw all five cards. I think the new one here is the real American hero. <laughs> the next time any hero performs an attack during this battle, add two dice to that attack. That is an awesome card. I can't wait for a lieutenant to show up, hopefully this time, and we can take one of them and hit them hard. Duke still has one more action left, and I do think he's going to move to the Cobra Temple, assuming slash hoping that some of the enemies might show up here so he and Covergirl don't have to move. They can go right into combat. Okay, that's going to end our first round. Let's go ahead and do the second round. Very likely, we're going to see a lieutenant. Our first of five spawns, we will have two of the Crimson Guard go into the jungle laboratory. That only has two units. We're okay. The second one will have two of the uh, Crimson Guard as well as a lieutenant. We get to see our first lieutenant, and that lieutenant will be Scrap Iron. That's one of the new ones. That's this guy. Look at him. Okay, so wherever location we're going to place him, which is in the um, Cobra Temple, which is right where two of our Joes are. That's awesome. That location is immediately going to be panicked. This means we'll place the two Crimson Guard and the Scrap Iron Lieutenant here. Now, there's not even five of those units in that space, but it's still considered panicked. And now, if we need to place any more units in that Cobra Temple, it's just going to go clockwise to the next location. We're also going to take this card, this Lieutenant's card, and remove it from the game. That will never come out again. Once we defeat him, we defeat him. We're also going to find his specific cards that he will use when we fight him in battle. There's a total of eight cards for the lieutenants. I have his here now, and he is from the expansion. I'll set those aside, and when we fight him, I'll show you how it works. That was two deployments. Let's do the third. Okay, we're going to place out two Cobra Troopers. That would normally be in the Cobra Temple, but remember that temple is panicked, so they'll move right to the Space Station Delta. And number four, we have one Cobra Trooper in the jungle laboratory. There's already two of the Crimson Guard there, but still that can hold six, so we're okay. And the final one, oh my gosh, three Crimson Guard in the jungle laboratory. That will be exactly enough to also panic that location. Man, we have two out of our four locations panicked. We'll then take these five cards here, give them a good shuffle, and then we'll place them at the bottom of the deployment deck. I love how they do that. Here is what the board looks like. These two locations are panicked. We can make this location unpanicked if we defeat at least that lieutenant. Once we defeat the lieutenant, all of the foot soldiers will run away. They're not considered defeated, but they'll run away from the location, and it becomes no longer panicked. In order to make this location unpanicked, we have to defeat all of these enemies. 
that's a lot because that's going to take more than one combat because we can only fight four at a time. And of course, what do we have here? Boom Strikes sitting here in New York City where nothing is going on. She was not in the right spot. Before we decide what to do this turn, I do need to replenish the one vehicle that was discarded, and that is Hal here. Deal two damage to each foot soldier card that has not suffered any damage. Kind of awesome. This may be super helpful for us. The first action we're going to take this round, Cover Girl is going to do a recover action. That means she will generate one energy if she doesn't have one, which she doesn't, so now she does, and she can take six shields worth of cards from her discard pile and shuffle them into her deck. She only has these two cards in her discard pile, so let's shuffle these into our deck. The total shield value is only four, not six. For the second action this round, we're going to have Duke initiate combat against our lieutenant. So now I get to show you how we defeat a lieutenant. We are going to grab the lieutenant cards, and we're going to reveal four of these. We need to, for the lieutenants, defeat four cards. We may be able to do that in one battle, because we're going to reveal four cards, or it may take multiple battles. The difference between a lieutenant and the boss is that we have to defeat six cards for the boss instead of four. So the boss will always take multiple battles to defeat. Duke already has five cards in hand, so Cover Girl will just draw two. She gets Tank Girl, I like that card, and she gets Beautiful Driving for five. We have both one of our energy in supply, and we'll gain two more for our battle, so we have four energy to play with. We'll now fill out the battle board, but the top will be the lieutenants, and the bottom will be the three foot soldiers that we're dealing with. So we have a guard passive ability. We'll look at that in detail in a second. Oh my gosh, another guard. Another guard. Well, good thing they can't guard each other. Uh, but this one, we're not going to be able to hit until we get through, uh, well, this one at least. And then we have two of these Crimson Guard cards. That's not fast. And this one is a guard. And then this one is not fast. Oh my gosh, none of these are fast. Limitless Ammunition is a guard card and is also passive. It says, while this card is in play, heroes cannot attack any scrap iron cards other than a Limitless Ammunition. So we have to attack this one. I can't believe there are no fast cards out on the board. So what we're going to do is start by using a vehicle. But we're going to use a vehicle at minus one cost because of Cover Girl. We're going to spend four foot soldiers to use our Mobat. We have three left, but this means we can roll five dice and deal damage roll to an enemy card of your choice. We're going to choose that limitless ammunition. Unfortunately, Bomb Strike is not in this battle, so we will have to discard this card. Five dice, hoping for four damage. We have one, two, three, four, five. That should be good enough. That was not even an action. We will flip this card over. Now let's do an action, but Bomb Strike is going to do an action. We need to deal five damage to this laser guided brilliant weapon. So we're going to play the targeted airstrike. Now you might go, but she's not in battle, Colin. How can you do that? We'll read this card. First of all, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six total dice. You may remove up to three foot soldiers from the power board to reduce the energy cost of this card by an equal amount. So I've got three left, perfect to make that cost zero. Now I have no foot soldiers on the board, but totally worth it. In addition, you may play this card uh, in any battle regardless of location. So she calls in an airstrike, we're hitting this card, rolling six dice, trying to get five successes. Let's do it, Bomb Strike. Don't let us down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Second card done. <laughs> and we still haven't paid anything for energy. This will mean this second card for the lieutenant is toast. Two down, two to go. We're now going to move to the lieutenant's turn. He's going to activate this card. Doesn't do anything. It's back to us. I do quickly want to call out something. This guard on this card normally would guard this card, except for this card also had the guard keyword, so they can't guard each other. However, this guard card is guarding this Cobra charge, so I can't attack this card until I take this one out. Why don't we keep with the big attacks, shall we? <laughs> We're going to play Real American Hero. This will cost three out of the four energy. We're going to roll one, two, three, four, five dice. And it says the next time any hero performs an attack during this battle, add two dice to that attack. Heck yeah. We're most certainly going to attack the next laser guided brilliant weapon. Duke will roll five dice for this attack. We have one, two, three, four. Oh, we're close. We're going to use Duke's ability to get a reroll here for five. Yes, 
One, two, three, four, five. That will be the next card that has been taken out. Three for Scrap Iron. So far, he has not even done anything. We'll just exhaust his next card, and it's back to us. Our cover girl will play a beautiful driving. This costs zero energy. We'll roll three dice. If a vehicle has already used this battle, add one die to the attack. We're going for the armor piercing rounds. If we can take this out, that means at the end of this round, the lieutenant is done. We normally would have three dice here, but we actually get plus two because of the real American hero. Remember that card? So we're going to roll five dice. We need four damage to take out this card. One, two, three, four. Golly, these dice are working with me today. So that means this card is now toast. That means we just took out this lieutenant. At the end of this round, that lieutenant is running away. We'll now exhaust his third card for activation, and now we just need to take out these three foot soldiers. Technically, we don't have to, but if we don't, we're going to have to suffer the consequences, and then they'll just run away. We can't put them onto our power board. I want to put them on our power board because then we can use them to activate vehicles or abilities. So I still want to take them out. There are only three remaining. However, the elite sentinels are guarding the area denial and the cobra charge. So I do think we're going to use our beautiful driving again, this time only rolling three dice because we have had a vehicle activate this battle. Three damage on three dice. It's a potential, but it's not a success. Only two. So I only dealt two damage. I don't have any rerolls, so it is what it is. The elite sentinels will take two damage. The final scrap iron card will exhaust. Now the foot soldiers will activate. Duke is going to play charge. That will be a two dice attack attacking this card and will gain one energy back into the supply. That will be our second energy. We have to attack the elite sentinels. We only need one damage here. We just barely got it. So that means one of the Crimson Guard will be removed and be placed onto our power board. Unfortunately, now we're going to start feeling the pain. We are going to activate Area Denial. This states, deal three damage, skip the next hero turn this battle. Really? So I have to choose one of the Joes to take that. I think I'm going to choose Duke. So we'll flip the top card of his deck. Oh, that only has one shield. Since there's only one shield, we're going to discard it. We have two damage remaining coming. We're going to flip the next one. Oh, it's a two. So we're going to discard this card. But now there's no damage left, so we won't reveal any more cards from his deck. We then would skip the hero phase, and this card would normally activate. But we already defeated that one, so nothing happens. It's back to our turn. We have two more turns. We can try and at least take this one out, I think, if we can. I think we will attack Cobra Charge with the all-out attack. It will cost us one energy to play. We'll roll three dice, but we may re-roll any number of dice during this attack, which is why I felt like he should play that. We need three damage on three dice. Ooh, that's two. This one went flying off. Oh, it's nothing. We get a re-roll. Come on. Yes, there's the three. So that will mean the Cobra Trooper is gone from that space. That means we now have two on our power board the last enemy would now activate and we'd get another turn where we could try and take out that other enemy but i don't think i'm going to do that my hands are depleted i think i'm just going to call it here because it's going to run away anyways because we took out that lieutenant there is one energy remaining and this time i think i'm going to give it to cover girl we can remove the lieutenant from the board because we defeated four of his cards. Whenever you defeat a lieutenant, you gain one of these tokens that lets you use one vehicle for free once per game. So you'll earn two of these so long as you take out the two lieutenants. So I'll place it onto my power board. That is awesome. We're also going to just remove this crimson hand or crimson guard and remove the panic symbol. So that location is no longer panicked. We're also going to reveal the next vehicle card. This is a vamp. Until the end of this battle, each time a hero performs an attack, they may reroll one die. Ooh, that's cool. Bomb Strike will use two actions, one to move into the pit. That will allow her to power up. She'll gain one energy back and then reshuffle her deck and draw up to five cards. And then her second action, she's going to move into the jungle laboratory. We've shuffled her deck up. Let's draw one, two, three, four, five cards and see what we get. We have our UAV reconnaissance, fight for freedom. Oh, that's a new one we haven't seen. Remote control, targeted airstrike, and remote control. Duke took a pretty big hit there. He has five cards in his discard pile with a total of nine shields. So he is going to spend two actions. That'll mean he only has one remaining to stop in the pit. 
for that free power up. He will also get one energy back. So now everyone has one energy. He'll draw his five cards after shuffling his deck, his discard pile, and his hand together. He has the all out attack, a charge, discipline, a charge, and the real American hero. Cover Girl only has these two cards in her discard pile, but I still think she's going to recover because I love them. Four shields, we can do up to six shields, so we'll just take those, shuffle them into our deck, and then we'll use an action to move into the same space. This will mean both Cover Girl and Duke only have one action. Bomb Strike actually has two. So Bomb Strike is going to be the one to initiate the attack against these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. But we can only do four, and I think I'm going to do all Crimson Guard. One, two, three, four for this attack. Cover Girl is the only one with less than five cards in hand, and she's definitely going to draw up to five. So she gets the Explosive Payload. That's an expensive one. And Tank Girl. I like Tank Girl. So that's a total of five for her. We have three energy from each of us. Plus, we'll get the two for our combat. So we have a total of five energy. We're taking on four Crimson Guard. This should be easy, right? <laughs> we'll see. We have four spaces for these Crimson Guard. Let's see what we get. Our first one is a guard. Our second one is fast. Bummer. So that does mean they're going to activate first. Our next one is guard and passive. So we should read that one. And our final one is a guard. Okay. Well, that guard is blocking this one. All of these can't guard each other, so they're not going to matter. But let's read this passive. Oh, this guy is mean. While this card is in play, increase the health value of each adjacent enemy card by one. I think we know which card we're going to try and take out first. <laughs> but first, we have to deal with the blasted ambush. We always seem to get ambushed by the Crimson Guard. Why is that? Deal two damage, drain one energy. So we'll take one of these energy. We now only have four instead of five. I think you can see that. There we go. And who do we want to have take the damage? Well, Cover Girl is sitting right in front of me. So I'm going to have Cover Girl take it. She, oh my gosh, she's got the armored advance that has three shields. So that'll just go to the bottom of her deck. She won't take any damage from that. Now let's activate. Cover Girl would like to use our heavy artillery laser. In order to do that, though, she needs a total of four foot soldiers. We only have two. Well, she has her ability to make it minus one. And why don't we add Boom Strikes card to that as well? Play this card when a hero uses a vehicle to reduce its cost by one. You may play this card in any battle regardless of location. That means we only have to spend the two soldiers that we have to activate this. This is going to deal two damage to each foot soldier card that has not suffered any damage. Now, this card, you can see it says deal two damage. It's not an attack, so guard would not block this attack. I'm also going to leave this out. We're going to use Boom Strike's ability that as long as it's not a passive, if we are activating a vehicle, we can leave it out because that card is sweet. Two damage across the board is wonderful, especially because that's going to straight up kill this one, which I'm happy with. This was not even in action. Now we can decide which one we'd like to attack. You better believe we're attacking this one. I think we'll simply use a charge from Duke that actually will give us another energy. Uh, but that will give us plus one to this attack, or I should say plus one energy, rolling two dice. All we have to deal is one damage. Two dice, one damage. We can do it. Oh, barely. We barely did it, but we did it. So we will flip that one over. That's a Crimson Guard. Of course, all of them are Crimson Guards. So now we have two onto our power board. We'll then simply exhaust that card and it's back to our turn. Bomb Strike will use UAV Reconnaissance. Remove one foot soldier from another location and place it onto the power board. Heck yeah. This card cost one energy, so we have four remaining, but we're going to remove this Cobra Trooper from the Space Station Delta. We'll now activate this Crimson Guard. Oh wait, we can't because we killed him. <laughs> and now it's back to us. We just need to defeat two more, each with only one health. We'll use one energy for Duke all out attack. He may reroll any number of these dice when he attacks. We're down to three energy, rolling three dice. I should have mentioned, but we're attacking the elite Sentinels. Three dice, one hit is all we need. We got it. That is another Crimson Hand taken care of. The final Crimson Guard will activate and then we will laugh hysterically as we play the Fight for Freedom card with Bomb Strike. We can attack with two dice, hitting the one that we still haven't taken out. After you resolve this attack, you may spend one energy to allow another hero to immediately play a one, one card with an energy cost of zero. We don't have to do that. 
All we're looking to do is take this guy out. Two dice with a reroll. We're so good. That's three. That is our final Crimson Hand gone. Uh, we still have two enemies there, but at least we took out all four of those. We have exactly three energy remaining, so each of us will take one energy back. With only one action left for each Joe, let's use one with Bomb Strike to initiate another combat in the same space, taking out the final two foot soldiers. Bomb Strike is the only one that wants to draw more cards. She has three in hand. She now has, or I should say two in hand. That will be three. This is four. I'm looking for a specific card. There it is, five, UAV, Reconnaissance. I'm hoping I can play that and I can take out that other foot soldier on the other side of the board without even having to go there. <laughs> I love that card. However, my deck now is only two cards big. Oh boy. There are only two foot soldiers. Let's flip this one first. Okay, it's going to guard this one, the Cobra Charge. No fast, so we actually get to go first. Cover Girl will activate Hell at a minus one cost. We'll also have Boom Strike play, or Boom, I keep calling her Boom Strike. It's Bomb Strike. Bomb Strike play Remote Control for another minus one, so it only costs two. And with Bomb Strike's ability, we're not going to discard it, dealing two damage to each foot soldier that has not suffered any damage yet. We still have three foot soldiers available, as well as our free vehicle token to use. Guard doesn't block that type of damage because it is not an attack. So two damage to each of these, and we still haven't even activated yet. I will use Tank Girl, rolling three dice for this attack, spending one of our, oh, we have five total energy. So I'm going to use one to make it go down to four. And we're going to attack this guarded card, or this card that is a guard card, because that's the only one we can attack. Three dice, give them a roll, just need one damage. There is one. That will be the Crimson Guard that's gone. Now it's just the Cobra Trooper remaining. The Crimson Guard will then activate, but it's been defeated, so it's back to us. You know what we're going to do. UV, uh, UAV Reconnaissance, getting rid of the one in the Space Station Delta, spending an energy. We're down to three energy, but that means we have gotten rid of all of the foot soldiers except for the one that's in our space. <laughs> Still love it. This will mean, though, we have to activate this Cobra Charge, and it says deal one damage, increase this damage by one for each foot soldier in that location. There aren't any others, so it's just one. Uh, Cover Girl, unfortunately, is on my left side, and she's right here, so she's always the one taking the damage, and she always seems to be able to soak it. Two shields, we'll just place that at the bottom of her deck. <laughs> she's so cool. Okay, now we just need to deal one damage here. What do you say we just use charge, rolling two dice, generating another energy, so we're back up to four. We'll roll up our two dice. Oh, we have one damage, just what we need to take out that final foot soldier, and that means that location is no longer panicked. Boy, we are doing great this game. My practice play, the characters I was playing with did not jive as well or something, because these three are jiving. Duke and CoverGirl each have one action left, so they would jump into here so they could do a full refresh, drawing five cards, and then we'd end the round. Then what we'd do is we'd continue doing that deployment until the boss showed up. Once the boss shows up, we'd have to take him on and defeat six cards instead of only four. So we have another lieutenant. The lieutenant we would have seen was Dr. Mindbender. Ooh. And then the boss, I have one of two, which one we would have fought, Cobra Commander. So... Once that Cobra Commander comes out, then we would have to take out six cards if we did that and survived the battle. So that means these two weren't gone and then someone was defeated and then uh, we didn't have any here to resurrect them. We'd win the game. That game was a lot of fun. I really enjoy the cooperative card play in this game so much. I love how damage is done. I love how the dice work. Uh, I definitely love playing with Duke because you need rerolls with these dice. <laughs> having two sides being blanks, having rerolls is key. Gosh, playing with the two characters that do the vehicle stuff, I love the vehicles. When you can start using vehicles to your advantage, those are free actions. They, I mean, they're super powerful. <laughs> Uh, I do feel like this game will get old quickly without more expansions. I'm hoping they'll come out with more. Uh, the Power Rangers ones have, and I think that's what's kept that one fresh for other people. Uh, and you can actually combine the two. They have rules on how you can combine the two, which is totally cool. Uh, if I liked Power Rangers or really wanted to convince myself to get that, I totally would. Uh, because the rule change for not having an auto loss once all of the locations are panicked, I love that. 
Overall, I was quite impressed with my plays of this game. I can't wait to play more. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if I made any errors, and I'll make sure to notate them in Klingon subtitles. As always, thanks for watching the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I hope to see you in some of our future playthroughs. I'll catch you at the next stop.